Hi, I'm Dr. Marcia Sirota, and today I want to talk about treatment-resistant depression. So what is treatment-resistant depression? It's just what it sounds like. It's our depression that is resistant to all treatment. And when people have it, they tend to go through a lot of different medications and also to explore a lot of the other options for treatment. But I want to break down treatment-resistant depression because I want to talk about what might cause it because sometimes when we're just throwing different treatments at a person and we're not thinking about what might really be underlying the depression that's so resistant to treatment, we're gonna miss important things. So the first thing we wanna think about when we're talking about treatment resistant depression is, is the patient actually taking their treatment? So you can prescribe medications and over my decades of practice, I have heard a lot of different stories about what people do with their prescriptions. Some people take the prescription, fold it up in their wallet and <laughs> never fill it. So I think that they're taking the medication, but they've never even gone to the pharmacy and bought the prescription. Some people will go as far as purchasing the prescription. They have the bottle sitting on their kitchen counter, but they don't actually take it. So again, if we're thinking about treatment resistant depression, this is not really treatment resistant depression. This is untreated depression. And of course the people continue to be depressed because they're not being treated. They're not taking the medication as prescribed. Some people take the medication, but not as prescribed. So they'll take it every few days, especially with antidepressants, that's very problematic because what they're doing is they're getting a lot of side effects, but they're not giving the medication a chance to build up in the bloodstream and become effective. So what I tell the patient is, if you're taking the medication sporadically, you're gonna give yourself lots of side effects and no beneficial effects, no therapeutic effects. So these are some ways that patients fool around with their medications or don't take them that could look like treatment resistant depression, but really what it is, is untreated or improperly treated depression. Now, some people play with the dose of medication. So if I say I'm going to give them 10 milligrams, they'll take half or they'll take it every two days. Or if I say I'm going to give them 20 milligrams, they'll take double the dose and give themselves lots of side effects and then they'll stop it and again, this leads to problems with the medication and of course the depression is not getting better. The same with anxiety medication, the same with any kind of treatment. So when you have treatment resistant depression, the first thing you need to look at is, is the patient taking the medication as prescribed? And if they are, are they on a dose that's working? Because then once we have them on a dose that is not working, we can increase to the maximum dose and if they can tolerate it and it's still not working, then we need to switch or we need to add something else. So treatment resistant depression might be that the person is underdosed and they need to go up to a higher dose. They may need a second antidepressant or they may, may need a different kind of medication to add to the antidepressant to help with their depression. Now, another reason for treatment resistant depression is that we have the wrong diagnosis. The person isn't actually suffering from what's called major depressive disorder. They may be suffering from something else. They may be suffering from a personality disorder or they may be suffering from bipolar disorder. Now, sometimes these are difficult diagnoses to achieve, especially when the people who are being treated aren't seeing a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist who has extensive training in observing and in diagnosing these conditions. You know, if they're going to their family doctor who has minimal training in mental health, the family doctor may not catch the subtle signs of a personality disorder or a bipolar disorder. So with these people, people who have treatment resistant depression, once we have established that they are on the correct dose of the correct medication, and they have perhaps tried a number of different medications, and they have even tried combinations of medications and their depression still doesn't get better, then we need to look at the second option, which is do they have another diagnosis? And that would be a good time for them to see a mental health professional to get an assessment and see what's going on. If they have a different diagnosis, that might require different treatment. Because clearly, if you're not treating the proper diagnosis, the person's not gonna start feeling better. And there are many conditions that have depression as a component, including personality disorders, or bipolar disorder, which are not well treated unless they are diagnosed properly. There's also depression with psychosis. And when you have that, the person has delusions or auditory hallucinations. Delusions are false fixed ideas. So you would have an idea that is false, but it's fixed. So it's not changeable. You cannot talk this person out of it. 
You know, if they believe that their neighbor is plotting against them, you cannot convince them otherwise. So they can have these delusions and they can hear things. They can hear their name being called, or they can even hear voices commenting on their behavior. And even at the worst of it, they can hear voices commanding them to do things, even to hurt themselves or to hurt others. So those are psychosis symptoms. And you can have a depression with psychosis and the depressed person might not want to talk about their delusions or their hallucinations, possibly because the, their delusions are of the paranoid nature and they're afraid to share them because they're feeling paranoid toward the mental health professional or, or their family doctor, or they're having these hallucinations, which again, they're embarrassed by or they're afraid to share. So you really have to probe to find out if the person is suffering from a depression with psychosis, because if they're suffering from that, the depression will not go away unless they're taking an antipsychotic medication as well as their antidepressant. So those are some of the diagnoses that you might find. They're not the only ones, but they're some of the alternative diagnoses that you might find when you're looking at a treatment resistant depression. And so you want to really probe deeply into the person's life and what's going on inside their psyche so that you understand if they're suffering from a depression or perhaps something else, or perhaps a combination of depression and another symptom like psychosis. Another reason for treatment resistant depression is that the person has gotten themselves into a predicament. Let's say they've overworked and they've become burnt out and they're so incredibly burnt out for overworking for decades that they've completely depleted themselves. Sometimes these people are so injured by their self-harming behavior. And by self-harming, I mean overworking and never saying no, never stopping, never taking a break for themselves, just going and going and going and basically emptying out all their energy, all their resources. They're so depleted, they're so exhausted, they're so overwhelmed that they can develop a very severe depression that can be very resistant to treatment because they have burnt themselves out. And if they have burnt themselves out, it can be extremely difficult to treat the depression that has ensued because they have very little within them to fight the, the symptoms. So these are very difficult people to treat. And again, you have to work very hard to find out if that depression is coming from burnout or if it's coming from somewhere else. Other sources of treatment resistant depression could be prolonged grief. If you have a person who is suffering from extreme grief from loss, and they cannot get over their loss, that can cause a treatment resistant depression. And these people need grief counseling, they need psychotherapy because the antidepressant alone will not help them because their grief is so profound, their bereavement symptoms are so deep and lasting that they need more intensive psychotherapeutic treatment to deal with those feelings so that they can get over their depression. Another reason for treatment resistant depression is that a person has a medical condition that is contributing to or causing depression. Some of the medical conditions that can contribute to or cause depression are hypothyroidism, anemia, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, even dementia can have components of depression. So we need to look at medical conditions that might mimic depression or might have components of depression. Because if we're not treating the hypothyroidism, or we're not treating the anemia, this person is going to continue to be depressed despite all the psychotherapy and antidepressant medication around. So we need to look at the medical conditions as well. So in summary, there are a number of things that can cause treatment resistant depression, including the patient not being compliant with their medication, the wrong diagnosis, burnout, bereavement, and medical conditions. And when we're treating depression, we really need to look at these conditions, even in non-treatment resistant depression, because if the person is improving, but not improving as much as we'd like, sometimes more than one of these factors can be involved, which can really complicate the case. So especially in treatment resistant depression, we really need to look at the possibility that one of these factors might be in place so that the person we're treating has the benefit of all our expertise and has a chance to start feeling better. I'm Dr. Marcia Sirota today talking about treatment resistant depression, and I'll be back to talk about more interesting topics in mental health and wellness soon.